Good afternoon. I am Mark Michelson, and of course, what I want to talk to everybody about is uh, an introduction to asterisk development. Um, asterisk, by the way, is a um, is a uh, it's an open source telephony engine. Um, now, the thing is, I find that whenever I go to open source conventions and such, most people have heard of and possibly also used asterisk, but most of them haven't taken the you know the plunge to try to actually start developing it. Um, so that's why I'm here today. So the very first thing you have to do in order to develop asterisk is you have to get code. And um, I've only provided three links. There's a whole bunch more asterisk branches which have specific features in them and such. But the biggest thing you'd want to be getting is either the trunk, if you were interested in, say, writing a new feature. Um, if you were interested in just seeing what the latest and greatest uh, official releases, uh, you would get the 1.6.2 branch, and if you're looking at the one that most people are still using these days because it's the uh, latest long-term release branch, you would go with the 1.4 one. So after you've gotten the code, I say the best thing to do if you want to start developing asterisk is to actually use it first, because it makes a huge difference if you understand the mechanics of it, at least at the user level, before you start trying to develop. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is try to you know, reach out to some of the community. If you have questions, uh, specifically user questions, uh, there's the Asterisk users mailing list, the uh, Pound Asterisk IRC channel, and if you have a bug report that you want to discuss, uh, you can go in the Asterisk bugs IRC channel as well. Um, thing about the Asterisk IRC channel, for any of you who have never been in there before, there are some quirky characters in there, and while they may seem like total assholes, they, are, you know, they mean well. So you know, <laughs> give, give them a shot at least. Um, so, all right, so you've gotten to the point now where you've used asterisk a little bit, and so now you want to start looking at the source. Now, a lot of people, when they open up their di asterisk directory, they start looking at this source and they go, oh, forget this. There's way too many directories and way too many files. I don't know where to even start looking. So, that's why I'm here. And I'm not going to go over every single directory or file in asterisk because that's pointless. I'm just going to go over the main ones that most people would actually want to code in should they actually decide to write asterisk code. So the very first two, uh, we got include and main. These are the only two that I'm going to go over that don't uh, have anything to do with loadable modules. Uh, the include file really goes without saying. It's .h files that all the files in asterisk include. Um, the main directory has uh, APIs that are defined by the core, um, things like, for instance, the uh, asterisk channel structure, which is one of the most basic key structures in asterisk, has all of its uh, APIs defined in the main directory, as well as the PBX core as, and other APIs that are just used all over the source. Uh, the next directory I want to discuss is the apps directory. The apps directory contains dial plan applications from within Asterisk. So for anyone who's used Asterisk before, um, you've probably used things like dial and voicemail and possibly other uh, applications. And these are all contained within the apps directory. Um, I also put in here in parentheses that this is a great starting point because for most people who use Asterisk, this is what they see or what they feel like they see when they're using it. So this is a good point to look at and see what sort of core API calls are being called there so that you can then possibly dig deeper from that point. Uh, then there's the funks directory, which is dial plan functions, which dial plan functions are similar to dial plan applications, but they focus more on reading and writing specific values um, rather than actually executing uh, applications. Uh, the next two directories uh, can be so, kind of confusing for some people because they seem sort of similar. You have the codecs, which are encoder decoder modules for specific uh, audio formats. So like um, here in Europe, the uh, codec A law is probably the most commonly used for telephony. Um, and then, of course, other you know, higher end codecs like codec G722 are also defined here. Uh, the formats, on the other hand, have to do with file format operations. So if you have, for instance, a WAV file and you want to be able to read a frame of audio from it, uh, this is the format uh, module is how that's done. Uh, the next directory is one that a lot of people like to uh, dabble into. It's the uh, channels directory, and this has uh, the specific channel drivers that Asterisk implements. Asterisk, um, you know, the most common one that people hack on there is ChanSIP because SIP is a protocol that has just a myriad of new features that could be added to Asterisk, and a lot of people want to get their hands dirty and go into there. Um, Asterisk also has its own specific um, 
uh, voice over IP protocol. It's called uh, the inter asterisk exchange protocol. Chan X2 is, is uh, the channel driver for that. And uh, another VoIP channel driver that I have here is the Chan H323 uh, driver. Uh, there are also other channel drivers for, um, non for more traditional telephony, such as uh, ISDN and uh, analog co calls as well. Um, and then another directory is the test directory, which is uh, it's still kind of in, an, in its infancy right now um, because there just haven't been a whole lot of tests added, but we're focused on adding a lot more, and this is actually a great area for people to contribute to if they're looking to do that in asterisk for the first time. Um, Also, in the trunk version of Astros, there's an add-ons directory. It used to be that Astros add-ons was a separate uh, repository from Astros itself um, because the code that it contained was license incompatible with Astros. Astros is dual licensed. It's uh, licensed under both GPL and under a commercial license as well. And so for pure GPL modules, we couldn't just include that with Astros because it was, uh, it would, if we uh, included it with a commercial uh, module, it, uh, then customers would have to always uh, uh, have the, the source code for those uh, postable, and most commercial customers are not fans of that. Um, and then the final directory is kind of the wildcard directory. It's the res directory. Res is short for resources. And res contains files that really just don't fit in any other category. So for instance, the music on hold uh, API and functionality is in the res directory because it really just doesn't fit anywhere else, really. So, you have a, a brief understanding of the directories now within Asterisk, so how do you start? Well, as I said before in the presentation, I think using Asterisk is a great way to start. Um, start with applications, dial plan functions, and such that you already understand, and try working down from there to the core. Uh, it's probably, it's a slow process, but it's the best way to do it, though. Um, and then, of course, if you decide that you're not going to actually use Asterisk, I'd say start with an element of telephony that you're familiar with already, you know, outside of Asterisk. So for instance, if one of you out there is a uh, SIP guru of some sort and you want to add some sort of SIP feature to Asterisk that you know is not there, you may just start looking in the SIP channel driver and just add your code directly there without even having used Asterisk. Um, now the second thing, of course, is read the coding guidelines. A lot of uh, submissions that we get for new modules and bug fixes and stuff, um, you know, they're perfectly fine, except they just don't fit the coding guidelines, so we tell them to redo their patch. And of course, you know, it would just be time-saving if, if people got it right to begin with. Um, so read the coding guidelines, and if you have any, you know, questions about how to do things, you know, you can probably look at some existing code and just model yours after the way it's done. Uh, feel free, of course, also to ask development-related questions. There's an IRC uh, channel, Pound Asterisk Dev, and an Asterisk Dev mailing list, uh, both of which, uh, you know, they have... There's, the audience of those two some, somewhat overlap, but uh, I think the Asterisk Dev mailing list has a lot more uh, subscribers to it. Um, also, there's two skeleton modules which are defined in Asterisk. There's a test scale and an app scale. Uh, which they don't actually do anything themselves. They're just modeled as a basis for you if you want to write your own asterisk mod module. And um, sort of on the same lines as reading the coding guidelines, if you have some function that you want your new code to do, for instance, asterisk is highly configuration file driven. So if you want your new module or whatever to be able to uh, read a configuration file, you could try to go and memorize the API, but that seems kind of silly when you could just use code that you know already reads a configuration file and use that instead. So, you get to the point now where you've actually written some code. So the very first thing I would suggest that you do is you upload your patch to uh, issues.asterisk.org. That's our issue tracker where we have both um, new features and bug reports uh, get uh, posted there. And then after you do that, you have to be patient because we have a lot of bug reports and unfortunately we don't have unlimited resource to, resources to work on those bug reports. So um, we try to get you know, some immediate feedback right away just because you know, some people, people just really don't like having their issue ignored outright. So you'll try to get some, you know, just some immediate high level feedback from, a, from our lead bug marshal. Um, and then after that, it's just a matter of until it comes up in our queue as far as you know, being high enough priority to 
get a lot of focus. And of course, if you get some sort of negative feedback from a bug marshal, um, don't take that as defeat. Because most of the time, they're not just going to reject anything outright. They're just going to tell you, do it a different way. And so it's really, it's just a matter of just following through whenever uh, you get some sort of negative feedback. And uh, finally, I have some very helpful links uh, for any of you who are interested in uh, Asterisk. First of all, if you're not one who's used Asterisk before, the first link I have here, which is... Uh, a, down, a freely downloadable PDF of a book called Asterisk, The Future of Telephony, Second Edition, um, gives a very detailed look at how to install, set up, and make calls with Asterisk, as well as pretty much any sort of feature you would want to be able to use as a user. Um, my colleague, Russell Bryan, who's also here with me, uh, has a blog post of his. It's a three-part uh, blog post which explains how to write an asterisk module. Uh, I have the link to part one here in my slides and uh, you can replace the uh, one with two and three to watch uh, parts two and three. And uh, if you do decide to go down the development route, I s highly suggest that you check out asterisk.org slash developers because that has instructions ranging from how to merge changes within our SVN repositories as well as uh, documentation for our APIs and, um, and other developer-related uh, resources that you might need. And uh, that's it for my talk. I've got about five minutes left, so if anyone has any questions, now would be a great time. I'll put the uh, links page back up just in case uh, people want to copy those down. No questions?